Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Just to make sure you can see my share screen. So, Chloe, I, I'm going to use you as my, you know, my participant to check everything working, <laughs> particularly with technology. So, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Joyce Ihui Chen. Um, I'm based in East Anglia or Norfolk uh, in the UK. So, I don't make assumption. You might be from somewhere else or you might be on holiday somewhere else in this world. Um, I just would like to give you a little bit of background. Um, I work at the College of West Anglia in Kingsling uh, in Norfolk. It's a very nice town. Um, I really enjoy my time living, working in Kingsling. You know, it's a very nice town, a lot of history. So before I talk about slow ontology, I would like to give you a little bit of context. Um, about seven years ago, when I had my son, so my son was born seven years ago. Um, after that, I totally, I suffered from postnatal depression. Uh, it was quite hard because everybody would assume that, you know, becoming a mother is a very joyful thing. You know, you would be very happy, but I didn't realize, you know, I had postnatal depression. Um, that didn't make me very happy at all. However, through that experience, um, I started exploring something I used to do as a, as a child, went back to my childhood, and I started doing origami again. Now, origami is an art of paper folding, and the word itself is from, from Japan, Japanese. So gami means paper and ori means fold or folding. So some of you, again, you know, some of you may may have been already using origami or enjoy using origami, you know, for leisure or for work. So through that process, I realized that how often we don't slow down our thinking, how much we are running around like ragged, you know, in our life, you know, particularly after COVID. I think during COVID, people, some people realized they they totally slowed down, you know, because they couldn't go anywhere. So they have to find something, you know, within their space, you know. And that was the second time, you know, I again um focus a lot on using origami for my own well-being to slow down. I have to give credits to Joy Effie. Um, and Lou is here <laughs> because I share some creation uh, with Joy Effie and re I wrote a little piece for Joy Effie magazine. And I found joy, you know, through slowing down and using origami as a media or medium to slow down my process. So for today, I thought um, following what Koi was saying, at the Learning and Skills Research Network, and again, you know, I can share information in the chat later on. I ran a session uh, about using origami as a way of reflection. And I also look into the theoretical, some of the theoretical background, because being um, a teacher educator, you know, I always like to find out, you know, is there anything that, you know, I can back up, you know, what we, we do, you know, particularly in terms of practice. So for the session today, I'm going to join up a bit of background, theoretical background, but also some practice. And I love this kind of <clears throat> delivery, you know, a little bit of background, a little bit of practice. So please do not feel um, worried about paper folding if you have never done it before because through the process of paper folding origami, I also realized how much I focus so much on perfectionism, you know, how much we know when you fold paper and you will experience that, you know, if the lines are not aligned or dots are not aligned, you know, you get frustrated, but actually through that process, you realize, you know, you won't get it first time, you have to keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, and then eventually, you know, you, you create this um artwork you feel good about it and even better you can share that artwork with somebody else so again that was my healing journey you know when 
I was really struggling at time in life. You know, I started creating work through origami and I gave it away. You know, I could create cards, I could create flowers, I could create Christmas um, baskets, you know, all sorts of things which I gave away, you know, to my friends and colleagues. And I really feel good about it and I still do. So I would like to just reassure you that, you know, the whole purpose of this webinar today is a little bit of learning, but also I appreciate this is lunchtime um, to kind of slow down, you know, our movement and then just enjoy yourself and be your whole self. By the end of it, if you're happy to turn out your camera to share your creation, I would really appreciate that. I'm sure Chloe would be happy to you know capture it if you don't mind or I can use my phone to capture it because again that final collage of creation also shows how much almost this is in the movement of trying to slow down and also I want to link into loose work you know in terms of radical rest you know I have to promote that here although you know we don't actually work on that piece of work together but I think there's so much about being a human being how much we should slow down uh, to embrace ourselves, but also work with others, you know, to have the rest, to get in touch with the nature, you know, because the world is fast enough. You know, we don't need to be faster. All we need to do is actually slow down. So without me talking further, very quickly, I'm going on to the, the couple of stories. Um, I gave you my personal story, but I'm going to give you a little bit of professional story here. So about two years ago, um, I was involved in a co whole college conference. Um, and I'm sure, you know, wherever you are working, schools, university or colleges, you know, you always have those CPD days or training days. And I was wondering what I could do differently, you know, because I kind of was a bit fed up with most CPD sessions because there was a lot of repetition. There wasn't enough of focus on practice or joint work. So when the human resources department asked, you know, what I would like to do, and I said, well, I'm, I will think about it. So I decided I could use something I enjoy, which is origami, and turn it into a, a collective joint work. So. The background story, what was important was I didn't do it on my own. I involved the carpentry lecturer. So on the left hand side, you could see there's like a tree. It's still there in our university center at college. So he actually created this or organic tree for me because I had this conceptual idea of hanging origami cranes after everybody made one and hang, hang them on, on the tree. And on the right hand side, I involve a teaching support officer who actually amazingly, you know, really talentedly created this contemporary tree using metal. So I engage with both lecturers, but also I engage with the media student and lecturers because they actually created video clip for me. They did all the editing. So on the day I had over 100, I think more than 120 participants who created, you know, these two trees. So you could see that, you know, how much working together can can really make a difference. And the feedback I had, obviously not all positive, you know, most people were amazed by how they could actually create an old origami crane, because origami crane, if you like origami, it's not easy you know it's probably more towards medium level um, and then some people say it was difficult because they found it hard to follow the instruction because they're they are quite complex but what they found really helpful was their peers because the peers helped them out you know some of them have made them before and interestingly some of them said um, they didn't really help with my well-being I actually got really quite stressed <laughs> So I said, well, that's fair enough. Actually, I was quite stressed the first time I made something difficult because I, I was like, oh, I couldn't get this right, you know, I wish I fall. But then again, that goes back to how much, you know, we want to be perfect and we've got to beat that, you know. So when good enough is good enough and when we know that actually this is our first time, this is our first three times, this is our first five times, 
over time, if I keep practicing it, you know, I'll get there. So I just thought I really would like to share this story, you know, because actually origami, professional development, they could go hand in hand. And a little bit of theoretical background here. So again, when, when I was doing my doctorate study, you know, I, I pondered a lot and I really enjoy Sennett's work about craftsmanship. So this quote really resonated with me. So over here, I'm just going to read it out, you know, so when the craftsman can pause in the work and reflect on what he or she is doing or what they are doing, these pauses need not diminish pride in the work. Instead, because the person is judging while doing, the result can be more ethically satisfying. So how often we focus on the outcomes and we forget about the process? And how often do we actually put attention on enjoying the process of it? You know, even though the world is hard. And again, we know that in education, we are in quite a challenging time. Um, I say that is because I've been working in primary school, a little bit in secondary school and in further education, and now a little bit of higher education. I noticed the change in how much teachers work or the workload has an impact on our well-being. And we are not thinking that how do we keep our workforce sustainably? And we talk about, you know, SDGs, you know, sustainability development goals, but a huge part of it is actually we need to work as a community. The more we can support each other, the more we are helping, supporting each other, we care and we support. The workforce will be much more sustainable. And in return, you know, if we got a sustainable workforce, what are the benefits? I think the benefits are a lot. You know, we pass on to our learners. They feel secure, they feel safe. We feel safe as well. So I think there's so much to say about, about the process, you know, not just the outcome. Outcomes are important, but really, you know, we, we really need to put so much emphasis on the, the process, you know, how we do our work, how do we work with others, and how do we work on ourselves. And then very quickly, um, oh, thank you, Chloe. Yes, you know, don't use too many um, acronyms in education. So again, my title today is about folding slow ontology. And I need, I must mention Jasmine Elmer's work. And again, thanks to Joy Effie and actually Lou as well. You know, it means so much Lou is here today. The, the concept of it, you know, I never heard about slow ontology before lockdown. And then I came across this term through Joy FE and a lot of the networks I'm with. So I went onto Alma's website. I was just taken, I was like really fascinated and really feel, you know, this is the work we have to introduce in our everyday life. So following the Learning and Skills Research Network conference, I wrote a piece about about this and this is a quote you know from my own work but also credits to Alma's work so I say that slow ontology advocates for a purposeful deceleration of our actions and thought encouraging a deeper connection with the present moment so again I think how often we forget about mindfulness you know in our work and in education and also a greater understanding uh, of ourselves. By engaging in slow ontology, we educators can facilitate a much, I would say, a much better reflective process and explore the inner self. And I often say how much we focus on our self consciousness and how we help our learners, you know, other teachers to focus on their self consciousness. This kind of work would achieve a more profound sense of fulfillment in our professional personal lives. And here I feel these are important because how much our personal lives impact on our professional lives and vice versa. They go hand in hand, you know, it's not the same professionalism as we imagine in the past, you know, because we, we bring our, our whole self to everything we do. So I can see lots of things going on in chat. It's amazing. And thank you for helping me out because 
I couldn't talk and share at the same time. I can't do that anymore. So following sort of the introduction about Senna's work and then uh, Jasmine Elmer's work, I'm just going to focus on the practice now. So what I would like you to do today, you know, is we are going to make an origami heart um, and really focus. So we are going to pause, pay attention to the folding, the breathing and feeling. Okay, so when we are folding, don't forget to breathe, you know, and feeling the paper. So as I said, if you haven't got a or square paper that's okay okay so here i've got just a you know like a junk mail really magazine so if you haven't got a square piece of paper what you need is to get a rectangular paper and what you need to do is to fold one of the corners okay and i'm just going to show you i don't know if you can see me very well because my my video looks very small okay so i fold one of the paper with a triangle and then you will get the bottom bit which is a rectangular shape we are just going to cut it off okay so just very quickly to show you that before we start and if you haven't got a piece of paper this is a great time for you to just anything really even a posting note but posting notes are a bit small um i don't recommend it particularly if you haven't done it before first time your your finger might just all tangle up like this is too small for me i can't do it so um so just make sure you tear off the bottom bit and here we go if you open now you got a nice piece of square paper here okay so very quickly while you are doing that getting your cell ready i'm just checking um, oh, thank you, Dot, you know, so you can click on my video to full screen if you want to, but I've got instructions on the uh, slides as well, okay. Um, right, so, so remember, bring your whole self to this process and really pay attention to your feelings, you know, what, what, goes, go, what, go, what goes on when you're folding a heart, and by the end of the workshop today, um, I would like you to just write a message, very short message on the heart you made. So what is the one thing I take away? Okay. So if you are ready, so making sure you're all, are you all ready, everyone? You know, give me a, in the chat, you can give me a thumbs up or, you know, so give you a moment. And I will make the heart at the same time as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Chloe. Right. So on the screen, you can see I made this uh, wreath or bunting, actually. So if you make a nerve heart, you can actually use a string to uh, string up the heart. Right. Lovely. Thank you very much. So let's start with the first step. OK, so you start with your paper. Um, just to remind you, if you've got one side of you know, patterns or color, uh, make sure you use the blank side. Okay, so start with the blank side. So if you want to show the pattern side at the as the end product, you know, make sure you start with the blank side. Okay, so I'm using um, a, a proper origami paper, so it's easier to show you. So I'll start with that. Um, place on the table as a Kai shape. Okay. So again, I'm going to just very slowly doing it. Okay. Right. And let's carry on to the next step. So the next step is to fold the paper in half by folding the top corner to the bottom corner and then unfold. One technique about origami is when you fold it, give it a really good press. Okay, so for example, in my case, you know, I fold the paper in half and give it a very good kind of press down, you know, to create that crease, very nice crisp crease. Okay, so 
So I hope you have done it. Okay, do it slowly. So I've done mine as well. So if we are all okay, let's move on to the next step. Now, this step, we are going to fold from left to right. So you can see you are creating a cross in the middle of your paper. Once you've done it, unfold again. So I hope you can see clearly on my video, you can see that I've created a, a cross. Okay. And no rush, take it slowly. We have plenty of time. Okay. Right. So And take a breath, okay? Don't forget breathing. And then let's move on to the next slide. The next slide, we are going to fold the bottom corner to the center. So you can see the tip of your bottom corner would align with the center dot, the center of the cross. So here we go. So you should have something like, if you can see my video clip, be like that, or you should be able to see on the screen with the slide. And next stop, right. So we are going to turn the paper upside down. Okay. So that's easy enough. So upside down. So you got the little triangle on the top now. And the next step, we are going to fold the bottom corner to the top edge. So the tip of your bottom corner will align with the top edge. Okay. So let's move on to the next step, right? Hey, so you can already see how we create the shape of the heart. So the next step, making sure you use the center line. Okay, so you can see origami is quite everything we create um, symmetrical. So we use the center line to guide us. So first we fold the bottom right and left edges to the center crease. Again, do it slowly, give you a good press. I'm folding up my left side of my heart. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the right side, the left side fold to the center line here. Okay, at this stage, you could potentially, this is like a cat, actually, you can turn it into a cat face. <laughs> it's the same steps, really. Okay, so essentially, we have got a heart, but I like to just beautify it a little bit, you know, so I don't quite like the sharp edges. So if we are all okay, and by the way, I'm sure Chloe will, if you don't mind, share the, the slides, you know, um, if people want to give you a go another time, you have uh, all the steps. So what I do is I turn the paper around and then you can see the cat ears on the top. I call them cat ears or rabbit ears. And I just gently fold it down. 
Some people will fold it all the way down to the top edge, some halfway. Again, it's pers basically a personal preference. You know, depending on how you like you like your heart to look like. So that's another thing about origami. You know, they potentially are different ways of folding um, origami. Um, you will find your preferable ways. And then the next step is left and right. So you can see the left and right edge. You know, you can fold the corner back a little bit okay just tiny bit okay okay and here we go we got a little heart again as i said um from all the worship i've done you know some people never done it before they did it first time and they say oh my heart is not quite symmetrical <laughs> the left side is a bit bigger than the right side well actually that's perfect because our heart is not symmetrical anyway <laughs> so please don't be hard on yourself you know and you make a lovely heart very nice heart so the final step as i said is if you could write a little message and that's my message to you is to you all and I appreciate your participation and love for learning today and particularly giving up your lunch time. Um, and that's amazing. Actually, I can feel, feel my heart rate going down already, like slowing down, you know, slowing down. And I got a lovely heart. I'm, I'm going to give this heart to my husband because it was his birthday two days ago and we, we didn't have time to celebrate. So I'm going to present this heart to him today. Um, and again, you can give the heart to anyone, you know, your family, friends, colleagues. Um, if you work with me, you, you quite often like receive random origami creation on your desk. <laughs> and I love it. So yeah, write a message. So what is the one thing I take away today? And I'm going to stop sharing and just give you a moment to pause reflect and write your message and, and once you've done it uh, if you are happy to share your screen with your creation if you don't want your face you can always like you know holding <laughs> your heart